guys, welcome to Recordbox Masterclass number nine. Uh, in this session, we're going to be talking about some more advanced features with in Recordbox mixing, along with how you can find songs that may fit your needs more uh, using the second option that we showed in the video last time. So first thing we need to do, load up a song. So throw a song on that you have the most of. So if you're 128, throw one of those on. 150, throw one of those on. 175, throw one of those on. So we just threw on Tutti Frutti uh, in this top channel. And you see how when you click this little, it almost looks like a connection DNA cell uh, between two nodes. So you'll click it, drag a track, and the recommended tracks that match with it are gonna appear differently based on the track. So we'll load in Tutti Frutti. As you can see, the Murder Final version two popped up. So what this is telling me is from what it's analyzed, from what it sees, it shows this song would be a good mix. So what you can do is it's as simple as clicking it and dragging it on the bottom one, or you find it uh, in your library and that will show. So this is going to be in your collection. It doesn't, uh, you can sort it by playlist, but it sorts overall by collection on what you have music wise. So another thing that always trips people up when they first start with record box is how can I go from a 160 in record box to a 174? So it's a little bit more difficult, but it's not impossible. So we don't really have any keys that are very aligned. We have so we'll use the Archangel by Quibs, and then we'll use, so that's a 9A key. So we'll find one that's either plus one or minus one, as shown in the Camelot scale. We're at 9A, so we can either go to a 10A or an 8A or a 9B. It doesn't really work when you crisscross like this, so a 10B to a 9A. Uh, you want to go in kind of one steps, but you can stage them out by two. Um, it's just not as an accurate of a key mix, if you per se. But so we loaded up this top track and it's 150. And we'll load the second track, which it recommends. So the Archangel uh, 9A. So we'll find one with a much higher tempo. So this 174. Um, well, I should do another. That's, that song is going to get flagged on YouTube. Um, it's a very popular song. So I wouldn't be surprised if it got removed. Uh, and I don't want part of the series to get removed. So we'll go we'll go a 9A to a to a 5B. Doesn't work, but for it's just for show purposes. So we'll start this top track and essentially we're at this is the master track in the player mode. And we're at 150 BPMs and then when you sync this one up, you're also at 150 BPMs. So this is going to be the master at 150, but you can move it around as you see they're both 150 here when this track is normally 174. So the goal of this is to get a 150 track up to 174 without being, without making it totally obvious you're cutting tracks, which is a very, very easy, you're a beginner DJ. But if you can make these large changes from 150 to 174 or vice versa, 150 to 124, your, strate your strategy that you're going to use with DJing is going to be a lot more flexible in terms of what you can play in crowd reading. So we'll start this off. And as you saw from before, we have our hot cue, which is number one, which is a loop. So what we're going to do is when it gets to this loop, we're going to continue the loop and we're going to start this bottom track. So it gets a little bit off. Um, in record boxes, you just saw I hit them at the same time, but there's a little latency. So the top track is still going. And what you can do is you can make this your master track. So you can move your master over. And then when you move this up, it moves the overall tempo up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slowly. This is very similar to the crossfader. We're going to slide this up and just start speeding up to 174. And then watch these bars right here. See how the top's counting down? We're going to out loop this one and just let him drop at the same time. And it's going to be a spot on drop. Ten, 
Bam. Just like that, you mixed a 150 track to a 174. You could tell a little bit with how it sounded. Uh, Record Box isn't perfect, obviously, because you don't have your lows, mediums, and highs. But you're able to tell what will work with each other, and this one actually worked okay, um, besides the one little lag when it, when we hit the one on there. Um, everything worked perfectly. So this is a very easy way for you to tell, for you to mix into stuff, see if it see if it works. So that's a way you can bring both the tracks up. As you saw, they were both synced. And when I was bringing this, the master track up, this one went up as well. So you didn't even need to worry about bringing both tracks up at once or getting a little bit off. Since you know your grids are on, you know everything's gonna be pretty much spot on. So unless your grids were off, these are gonna be on. Um, otherwise, the last thing in this session before we talk about exporting in Masterclass 10 is gonna be along with your genres. Um, not all genres are gonna to work together uh, and every DJing style is a bit differently. So the way we're taking this for electronic music isn't gonna be the same way that hip hop DJs do it or uh, I've, I've seen country DJs, but just, just don't. Um, but other than that, your genre, you're gonna kinda wanna stick in the same category even though you can go outside. But when you're starting off, pick one genre of music to really get good at and stick with it. Learn that and that's how you're gonna become very proficient at DJing even before you touch any of the CDJs itself. So that's all for the majority of record box. The last part is gonna be just exporting and setting up your flash drive. But other than that, I will see you guys in masterclass number 10.